I was planning to create a video about the latest features of Inkscape 1.3. However, I realized I have never used Inkscape before. So I thought this could be a perfect opportunity to give it a try. Before we jump in, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for notifications. Thank you. In case you don't know what Inkscape is, here's a super fast summary. Inkscape is a free, open source vector art program, often compared to Adobe Illustrator and CorelDRAW. I like to think of it as the blender of the vector world. Inkscape has a unique approach compared to other design software. While I'm familiar with Adobe Illustrator and other vector programs, and more recently Amadine, which I found to be a great alternative in comparison to more traditional vector design software. If you have a moment, check out that video where I share my thoughts on it. Navigation in Inkscape is wildly different to what I'm accustomed to. Its approach to vector design kind of reminds me of what it was like to use Blender for the first time, where navigation was alien and it was kind of challenging to get a grasp of how things work. Personally, I find Inkscape to be similar to CorelDRAW, and CorelDRAW doesn't really fit my preferred workflow. However, I acknowledge that it's a good tool and you may have a different experience with it. So don't dismiss it solely based on my opinion. While using Inkscape, I opted to use the default keyboard shortcuts, but I found it to be confusing. So I switched to the Adobe Illustrator shortcuts and it made things a bit easier. I'm also struggling with splitting handles while using a pen tool, but eventually I figured it out. I wanted to try using a shape builder tool. I really appreciated Adobe Illustrator's version of it and it had significantly improved my workflow. In my view, the Inkscape implementation is decent, not extraordinary, but good. Additionally, it does not operate in the same manner as a shape builder tool in Illustrator. Nevertheless, it functions effectively and accomplishes the task. I guess I could go over some of the new features of Inkscape here as well. So let's take a look at what's new in Inkscape 1.3. Document Resources Dialog. Efficiently organize your Inkscape documents with this tool. Font Collections. A new button categorizes fonts into collections for easier identifications. Patterns. Inkscape has a library of patterns with pattern editor for modifications. Layers and objects dialog. Multiple objects hide and lock with a single swipe and useful shortcuts for navigating and tweaking. Persistent snap bar. Snap settings can now be easily adjusted. Page, margins and bleed. You can now control margin bleed in RGB format while printing. Lasso selections for notes. As a node wrangler, you'll find it much simpler now to select nodes that are difficult to choose with the rectangle selection method. Live path effect dialog. This updated dialog makes it easy to control your LPE situation. PDF import rewritten. Inkscape's PDF importer has been updated with improved font processing and new summary dialog. Node detection logic changed. Pin colors in palette. Save essential colors from a palette for quick access and adjust swatch sizes. Paste on page. Easily copy and paste objects between pages in Inkscape while maintaining the original position for efficient template and presentation creation. And finally, we have the filter editor overhaul. My thoughts on Inkscape? It's alright. I find some of the program's nuances difficult to understand, but if we overlook the fact that it's free, it's a capable package that can help you produce impressive vector artwork. I would definitely recommend you try it out. Thanks for watching gang, have a great rest of your day, evening or night.